Good evening. Thank you for joining us again. This is Ray Howell with DangerAware.org. We are a nonprofit for the prevention of abuse through play and entertainment. And you're hearing our theme song play in the background there. And so tonight we're going to work on our character family. Uh, if you were with us on the last video, we created a any Zoe's relative, uh, Zoe's rel, where we can create seven octillion, nine hundred and thirty-seven septillion, one hundred and forty-seven sextillion, seven hundred and thirty-two quintillion, 541 quadrillion, 440 trillion family members from a single Moho character. So here is our any rel character. And last time we created three random characters on the fly and I've Go ahead and I, I've deleted those and moved on. So what I'm going to show you tonight is how to actually utilize the any relative character to take it even beyond the 7.9 octillion different characters. So if you watched the last video, you know that we can go into our animation layer and adjust these levers here to create a unique character and that it's possible to create up to eight octillion characters using this. And this is well and good when we're in this scene here, you know, we can we can duplicate the character and make multiples of them as I did last time. The problem is, and, and it's not a real big problem, but when we do duplicate the character this way and we want to separate and have a secondary character so we're going to change this one a bit so that it looks different than that one we'll give bigger eyes and a smaller head but if we want to change the colors they're going to change together so if we want to change the face color to green they're both going to change to green so that is the one drawback of using the any variable character and making duplicates. You're going to end up with the same color characters for that group. But we can actually do better than that because if you create a scene and then you import your character, so we're gonna do that now. We're gonna to come in here and import a moho object and we're going to click on, uh, we don't want Zoe Zoe, we want any. And we're going to go with the latest version, which is four. So we're going to import this character. And now we can move it over here to the side because we're not in the actual animation yet. So we're going to create this character over here. And then we're going to duplicate it. So you've got Zoe's Rel and Zoe's Rel 2. And we'll just move the second one to the side here so you can see them. And then we're gonna import the same character again. So we're gonna go to import Moho object and version four and bring it in. Now, we can unlink shared styles. What does that mean? That means we've got styles here that these two characters are sharing. They have the exact same name and they are in fact the exact same color. If we unlink for the import of this character, now we go to styles and we've got two sets of those styles. The second set and go to the face and alter its color, only its color changes. The original two characters do not change. So through this process of importing our characters into the uh, background that we're going to work with, 
we can actually have different colors of the same character and then we end up with even more than eight octillion possible characters because we can change colors as well as maintaining the same facial look. So now these characters all need to be changed so that they are all different. We don't want them looking the same. But if we do that here in the construction layer, as soon as we click in the construction layer again, it's going to reset them back to their base character where all of these control bones are straight up and down. So we have to move into the animation layer to begin changing them where they can stay changed. So I'll, I'll demonstrate here by making them each extremely different from each other. So just change different features. All right, so definitely they're all three different and we're in the animation layer. And this is now when we need to go in and lock their shy bones. So by locking the shy bones, we don't accidentally change this character into a different character. So we're gonna shy, hide the shy bones on all three characters. And so they're now set, but if I go back to the construction layer, they are going to revert to their construction layer look. They are still individuals if we go back into the animation layer and anywhere in the animation line, they're gonna be themselves. But in the construction layer, they're going to look like their root self. Those settings are still contained within the first frame of our timeline. And so now we can bring these characters into our scene and start activating them, making them walk around and doing things, interacting with each other. If we wanna change the face color on the first two, they're gonna to change together. But because we imported the third one separately, that face color will remain separate and not change with the other two. So we should actually rename this one here. So we'll go with uh, Rel, uh, Zoyrel A instead of one and two. We're now in the A. So there you go. That's how we can use the importing of our variable character. And with this variable character, we can create literally billions, quadrillion, octillions of characters. So right here, I'm just going to go to 5,000 on my timeline. And at the first position, I'm going to just move all of these levers for Zoyrel here, uh, Zoyrel 2 here. I'm going to move them all far left. Okay. For the moment, I'm just going to demonstrate that we can go through literally tons of different characters on the fly and just literally have more characters than we can ever actually use. So here, we're not even using all 13 levers. For some reason, this character is missing two levers, but all the others are working. So we can just do this. And if we play the animation, let's well let's set the other one. Let's set the other character back to uh, standard. Now we can do even better. We can we can alternate where these bones are actually moving. So let's go to we've got we've got uh, eleven of them working. So let's go every every five hundred. So we'll jump to five hundred here. Oops. 500 here and let's move this first one all the way over to 500 
Then we're going to jump to a thousand. And at a thousand, we'll move the second one all the way over and move the first one back. And then at 1500, oops, we'll move this one all the way forward, this one all the way back, and this one all the way forward. And then we go to 2000. And we'll move this one all the way forward, this one all the way back this one all the way forward and this one all the way back then we'll go to 2500 and we'll move this one forward this one back this one forward this one back this one forward and then we go to 3000 and this one forward this one back this one forward this one back this one forward, this one back. And let's just look at that, just for just for the 3,000. So we'll start all the way at the beginning and hit play. And here we go. So now the changes are more pronounced. You can see the literal alterations occurring here. And every 500 we're going to grab another feature and start altering it. So we can stop this at any moment and lock those bones and keep the character that we find. So if you want to find a random character that looks cute or suits your needs, you can do it like this, simply watching them play through until you find, oh, that's what I want, you know. Of course, it would be your characters and not ours. And of course, the quality here, we're looking at the construction layer. Let's look at uh, preview quality, if it'll let us. It's not going to let us. Yeah, let's stop and start again. Yeah, see, it's, it's converting everything to uh, as low quality as possible to keep memory down. But you get the general idea of what the character looks like. Simply stop and you will see the better quality of what the character looks like. So we can literally create more characters than we could possibly ever use. This is just going through a, you know 5,000 possibilities here out of eight octillion and when you throw in color changes the changes are uh, literally unlimited because we can change any color to one of 16 million colors so if we took that into play for each part of the character we, we literally have an unlimited number of characters all related or of the basic look and uh, functionality and they're fully rigged everything's ready to go there's no extra rigging to be done we simply stop at any point and we can start manipulating the character's bones and do whatever we like to make the character an active character so not only do we have the ability to make different characters we compose them and we can animate them <laughs> so let's go back a bit here and start again so there's how we can have eight 
octillion different characters and produce them on the fly for anything we want them to look like. So you can come up with quite a bit of uh, functionality and background characters that you don't ever have to use again, you know. You need background people that are walking by or characters that are walking by that you may never see them again in any other animation. In fact, unless you save them specifically, you're unlikely to get them in any other animation ever for making different heft of characters in their abdomen and such. But everything is great. You have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Again, please visit DangerWare.org and donate to help support the uh, par changing the paradigm of abuse awareness in the world. We're creating games, contests, cartoons, comics, and so on to try to entertain people and during the process teaching personal rights and how to call out grooming for abuse. So it's not just about us creating these characters. We're actually going to animate them and put them into cartoons so that we can educate the young and vulnerable. So please visit DangerWare.org play our games, enter our contests, donate to our cause. Thank you very much. Danger, danger, could be a stranger